now that you have your little cafecito and your pan and maybe some tea, let's do the spill session of labor and delivery during a pandemic. So, <clears throat> it was really, really crazy because the week that baby Isla was supposed to be born, I was having no contractions. And for the last two weeks, I had been dilated only one centimeter. So I was like, this baby is not coming anytime soon. And so my doctor decided that it was best that we move forward with an induction. So we were gonna have her a week after pretty much she was supposed to be born because the doctor said that we can still give her some time. She can still come on her own time during that week. And so we had an induction scheduled for October 2nd. Well, let me tell you, I had no contractions. I had no nothing, right? And my mother-in-law was like, I swear by this salad. It's a salad in Studio City, guys. I don't know the restaurant. I don't know like what the salad is even called. But she was like, look, I swear by the salad. This salad will have you like in labor within like hours or even a day. So I was like, mm, it's okay. Like I can wait. Like honestly, it was just so scared. I was like, no, I can wait. I can wait for it to like, I can wait for her to come at her own time. And she was like, no, 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 please, you know, like, let me bring it to you, whatever. So she brought me the salad the night of um, Isla's due date. So it was a Saturday. My boyfriend was, he's doing clinical rotations at different hospitals. So he was doing his, like emergency medicine rotation and he was actually at the hospital um, and just, you know, putting in his hours. And his mom comes over and she's like, here, you know, like you should eat something, you should eat this salad, you know, it tastes really good, but this is a salad that I was telling you about that's gonna get you into labor. And I was like, girl, I don't believe you, like, no. And let me tell you, girl, I was wrong. So she brought me the salad and she stayed for like maybe an hour or two. She lives, thankfully she lives 10 minutes away. So if anything happened, you know, like, she can, she's really close by that we can call her. So I ate the salad and I will ask her where she got it from and what it's called so I can link it in, or so I can just write a description in the description box so you guys know. So any of you ladies who are in labor and like are waiting or just wanna try this out, go ahead, be my guest and tell me your experience. But she brought me the salad and it was like arugula and it had like some greek feta cheese and it had like some monterey cheese it had walnuts and then the dressing was like really 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 dark and it was like a vinaigrette type of deal thing but it was so good and i'm so picky like i don't even like salads and so i was like okay whatever i'm just gonna eat this salad it had no chicken no protein well i mean cheese has like some protein but i had um I had no chicken and i was just like okay whatever i'll just eat it so I ate half of the salad. It was huge. It was so huge. And I just was like, okay, I'm just gonna eat half of it. Like I'm not that hungry. I really wasn't. It was like 6.30 and I was like, oh, whatever. So her and I stayed talking and she was like, do you think you're gonna have the baby anytime soon? I was like, girl, I haven't even had contractions. Like it, I, I swore that it was not happening. And so she left around 7.30 and I'm like, all right, bye, see you later. And lo and behold around 8 30 i start getting like pains in my stomach kind of like a period cramp but a little bit worse and i was like okay i can tolerate this you know like maybe it's just her moving or you know whatever and um but i know her movement so it definitely wasn't that so i was just like okay whew, it might be happening but i've heard women stay in labor you know for days and before they even go to the hospital so i was like oh i'm just gonna wait whatever and I had this little contraction app and I'll link that one down below too. It was it was pretty cool. So you would start the watch every time you had a contraction and then once obviously once you like felt no pain, I would stop it. So then within that hour, it would tell me how many contractions I've had and it would estimate how far they were. So I was able to like tell whether or not, you know, like should I be going to the hospital? Should I be calling my doctor? So um I took a screenshot of that, I sent it to my boyfriend, and he was like, mm, maybe you should call your doctor and see, like, more or less, you know, like, what he says. And I was like, you know what, I'll just wait until 1030, I'll wait two, like, give it two hours, if it's consistent, you know, like, I'll call. So, 
lo and behold, it's 1030 and now I'm getting pains that they're stronger. And I was like, whoa, you know, like I was kind of like bending over the counter and I was like <sighs> trying to like breathe calmly. And so I was like, okay, this is, she might be coming. And then in the back of my head, I was like, oh my God, I literally felt nothing until I ate that freaking salad. It's so crazy. And so then I was like, okay. So I'm like bending over the counter and I'm like, I need to call my doctor. So I call my doctor and they, you know, I speak to him and he was like, hey, Crystal, how are you? And I was like, oh, I'm doing good. You know, like I like have this like little app that's been like kind of watching my contractions and, you know, just giving me the times and distance of like how far apart they are. And you know, it's been about like five minutes and they last for about a minute. So I'm just kind of, you know, just calling in to see what you think I should do. So then he was like, oh yeah, you know, it does sound like you're going into labor. So you can stop by the hospital and we'll check you to see how far along you are and decide whether or not you need to stay. So I was like, oh, okay, perfect. So my boyfriend wasn't actually off his, um, I guess, rotation. He wasn't off his rotation until one o'clock in the morning on Sunday. So I was like, okay, I don't want him to, you know, cause every time he misses, he has to make up a day. So in my head, I was like, okay, it's 1030, you know, the baby, I swear, like the baby's not gonna come like in the next three hours or something. So I was just like, you know what? Um, I'm gonna have to ask his mom to take me. His mom's gonna take me and drop me off and I'll just wait there by myself, it's okay. and. And I'll just wait for my boyfriend to get there. So I text I text my boyfriend. Well, actually, like he had asked me to FaceTime him, especially during this time, like this week. And he was just like, you know, you need to FaceTime me and let me know exactly like, you know, what's going on. So I FaceTimed him and I was like, babe, I talked to the doctor and they told me that like I should go in. And he was like, okay, you know, call my mom. Like she's right down the street. Like, and then our hospital is literally right down the street too. So I was like, oh, it's just perfect. So... I end up calling her she ends up like she, she calls and so i call her and i'm like hey milu so i think i'm going into labor you know like that salad and she was like oh f oh my god oh f <laughs> so like i couldn't stop laughing because like we both were laughing over the phone because it was just like oh my god like nobody like we literally thought like this was not gonna happen just because there was no contra no signs of anything so i was like okay whatever so she comes and she picks me up. We go to the doctor's office or we go to the hospital and I'm checking in. And obviously it's during COVID, so we're wearing masks once I go in. I didn't take any bags, anything. I took my purse with me initially, but my boyfriend, you know, we had we had spoken to each other, so he was like, you know, once I get off of work, I'm gonna go to the house to pick up our bags and you know well I'll, I'll go to the hospital so i was like you know what completely fine like get comfy so that way like you know you're in the hospital nice and comfy so then we're walking into the hospital after we park and i have my mask on and everything she has her mask on and everything and they take they check your temperature obviously when you walk in so my temperature was at 99.0 so when i checked in the lady was like oh well i can't have you come in and i was like Oh, I'm having a baby and so I'm in labor and then the nurse at the like check-in station was just like oh yeah she's in labor obviously like her her temperature is going to be a little up because you know her body is going through contractions and it's like you know it's obviously it's, it's, it's putting in work basically and so she was just like oh yeah yeah so they took my temperature one more time to make sure that it was only 99 and nothing above which it was only 99 so they were just like okay so they had my mother-in-law wait like by the elevator area while I checked in and signed all my paperwork. Um, I just had to, it was just a whole bunch of signing and I was having contractions still at that time. So bad. So then finally they checked me in and I end up going into like the assessment room and I'm waiting, you know, whatever. And they start taking my blood, my blood pressure and they call in a doctor, you know, obviously to come check me. And so the doctor checks me, I end up being two centimeters dilated. The thickness of my cervix was basically 90% ready to go to give delivery. So I mean, to give labor, like to 
had my baby and I was like, oh my God. So, so when the doctor checked me, she said I was two centimeters. She said, you know, my cervix was pretty thin. And so within that time, like I said, they checked my blood pressure and it was like super, 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 super high. So they were really, really concerned. So the resident that checked me went in to go talk to my doctor, the attending. Um, and so he decided that it was safer for me to stay in the hospital because of my blood pressure and because um, my feet were a little swollen. And during my whole entire pregnancy, I had no swelling, which was crazy. But yeah, so he was just like, you know what? I think you need to stay here and you need to labor here. You can't, like, I don't feel comfortable having you go home. And so I was like, okay, you know, like, that's fine. And I thought nothing of it. Like, he tells me and decides, okay, you're going to stay. He checks me in. He, you know, like, I get sent to um, a labor and delivery room. And the, let me tell you, it was super, super big. I'll insert a little clip of the room where we had the baby. <laughs> really big we had a really nice view and so you know it's like 11 30 now that I'm in there and the doctor's asking me like oh do you want an epidural so I was like you know what I'm just gonna wait so at this point I'm also texting my boyfriend you know like because I'm like I'm not nervous I was like super super chill about it and I was just kind of like in a lot of pain but I was like walking around and I had like they had already stuck in IVs in me um I had tested positive for a bacteria that can get the baby sick when you're giving birth it's nothing bad it's nothing like you know women get tested for this every woman gets tested for this um during their pregnancy so i had to have i had to have antibiotics given to me prior to me giving birth so i was like already hooked on penicillin i was like walking around you know like feeling myself like okay you know this is good i'm okay and the pain started getting harder and harder and i was just like oh my god i don't know if i could take this and so I text my boyfriend and I was like, you know, they're asking me if I want the epidural. I'm going to wait for you because, you know, everyone who I've heard of got an epidural. I have always said, like, it's the scariest thing in the world. And honestly, I'm scared of needles, but I've, kind of, I've been kind of like growing out of it. And I thought, you know what, it's probably going to be fine. So the pain started getting really, really, really bad. And I decided at 1230, I was like, you know what? <laughs> um, nurse, can I have my epidural, please? I honestly, like, I give props to all the women who give natural births and don't do the epidural because I was already in so much pain and it had been, like, only three hours. So women who labor, you know, like, 10, 16, 20 hours without an epidural, like, I think that's amazing and you are a hero, you are a superstar. But <laughs> I needed that epidural and, you know, I didn't feel ashamed about getting one at all. They gave me the epidural and after that I was like on cloud nine, I was super comfy and then finally my boyfriend showed up like around 1.30. You can only have one person in the hospital when giving birth during COVID and during the whole time if you have a nurse in your in your room or a doctor, obviously <clears throat> any employees, you always have to have your mask on but once they left you could take your mask off. It would be like, you know, if it was me and my boyfriend like we could take it off and it'd be fine but anybody else who entered the room we always had to have a mask on. So, you no, know, we're hanging out, we're chilling, and he ends up falling asleep, I end up falling asleep. Um, the next day, my boyfriend had a shift to go to, and he decided that he was not going to go to it because we didn't know when the baby was going to come. So he ended up staying with me all night, and I was really happy. Then the next day on Sunday, um, I labored all day, and I was like hoping and praying like you know the baby was gonna come out soon and I would say I was in labor for about sixteen hours I would say but um it was just it was just all crazy. Um I was dilating perfectly, you know, within the hours. Um the baby was good. She was she was moving, she was doing fine, and my nurse, my delivery nurse, was the most amazing thing in the world. She fought for me so much. 
during the process they kept trying to give me pitocin you know that doctors use to kind of like continue your contractions and keep them going so that way like you can just deliver the baby faster and it just kind of like speeds up the preg the, the labor and delivery and so you know i just just because of my blood pressure i had to have like a cuff on me the entire time and um the nurse was just like you know she was just kind of concerned and she just wasn't like happy with the fact that you know like i can give in pitocin and um she just didn't want to stress the baby out and like sometimes she could see like on the monitors that the baby wasn't sometimes responding to the contractions and so then sometimes when they would when she asked them to lower the pitocin down or when she lowered it down herself um you know my the baby started responding to my like just my contractions alone and not just the pitocin that was you know making them happen so you know i was on and off the pitocin and um my boyfriend wasn't too concerned he was okay with it but we were also like happy that the fact that you know this nurse was really really like just so so amazing she never left my room never left my room and so she was a travel nurse and i will never ever ever forget her she honestly she reminded me of my best friend who lives in texas and she was just this nurse was just so supportive she was so knowledgeable it was so crazy and it just like it just felt like i knew her and um when i think about it it's just like crazy like i get so emotional because um my best friend moved to Texas and when I got pregnant, like I didn't get to experience like anything with her. And um, so having this, she doesn't know this. <laughs> so having this nurse there who was kind of like her was kind of like she was there with me. And um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting so emotional. Um, with that nurse, my boyfriend even brought it up too. He was like, wow she reminds me of like your best friend and I was like oh my god she does and it was just like it was just crazy um but this nurse was so supportive and like you know just everything just her like energy and everything was just amazing so um getting onto the delivery I know this is taking a while guys it was crazy so um during that whole time they just you know the residents came in and they kept checking me and because of my high blood pressure and my swelling they told me that i had preeclampsia while i was in labor and delivery it wasn't severe it was mild um just because of my high blood pressure and my swelling i wasn't too bad with the, my swelling in my body it's nothing that you know it's something i can avoid it could have avoided um when i spoke to my doctor he told me at least you know 10 to 15 percent women actually do end up getting preeclampsia so you know my boyfriend was not too concerned so if he wasn't too concerned i felt like i was okay and i was safe just because you know he's studying this kind of stuff and so going on with my labor and delivery my water broke at 5 30 in the morning um on the 27th and so i was pushing for about two hours like two and a half hours or so and uh, before like i actually you know gave birth and it was the most crazy experience of my life there was so much commotion everywhere so they had so many doctors come in my labor and delivery nurse was there but then they had two other nurses that were going to tend for to baby isla after i gave birth to her they had the pediatrician there they had my the doctor who was going to deliver the baby and then they had obviously like residents there people who are learning to be attendings so they had you know those people there as well so it was just like honestly it felt like there was like it was like a birthday party going on for baby Isla to like when she was born so everything's going on and the last 30 minutes of it was probably the most intense and like scariest part that ever like that I've ever experienced so I was pushing for two and a half hours and like you know my hormones are like all over the place and so um I was like crying like no other like I just I couldn't stop crying and there was a point where I was just like I can't like I feel like I can't do this like I, I can't do this like I had felt her crowning and it is so painful like even though you have your epidural you can feel it and like there's they don't give you so much because you need to feel those contractions once you start like actually pushing to that point so I was like in tears I was so scared you know like because I had preeclampsia and um 
you know, some women lose their lives to that. So I was just kind of like, I, it was just all over the place, but my boyfriend was there and I, like, I felt safe and like, just, you know, I can do it with him. And so I was kind of like, you know, I literally said, I can't, like, I can't do this. And so I remember my nurse literally getting in between my legs and her face was like right here. And she was like, I don't want to hear you say that. Like, I want to hear you say, you can do this. Come on, say it, say I can do it. And so she was so encouraging. And so, you know, I was like, okay, I need to muster up my strength. I need to get this baby like into this world. And so, you know, I pushed a few more times and when I was pushing and her head like popped out, the resident, the doctor resident said something in the words as, I can't reduce. And I literally didn't hear that. I was just so like focused on, you know, my breathing and focused on pushing my baby out and, you know, getting her into this world. And my boyfriend obviously knows medical terms and everything, you know, he understands. So he had looked at me and he was just like, kind of like went pale and um I was just kind of like okay what's going on you know but at the same time like there was just no room for me to talk and I was just so like you know I felt every contraction and I just like in my my body just wanted to push and so it was just like really like I'm explaining this like it sounds really long but it was like literally in the snap of a finger like it was so fast and so the resident said I can't reduce and my boyfriend looks at me and he just looks so worried and so when they say that they couldn't reduce, basically what happened was my daughter's umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck and it was wrapped around her shoulder. And um, during, like during when I was just laboring, heart beat, right? Heartbeat. Um, it fell, it dipped like three times. And so we thought nothing of it. We just thought, you know, the baby's like tired, you know, like they're giving her, they're giving me too much Pitocin and like they're, like we felt like they were pushing her. And so, lo and behold, we didn't know that her umbilical cord was actually wrapped around her, her neck. And so, that's what it means by, like, she couldn't reduce. So, the attending then tells me, you know what, with this next push, you need to continue pushing and you just can't stop. So, I, you know, like, I didn't hear her say, like, I can't reduce. Okay, all I said, all I heard was, you need to keep pushing, like, and don't stop. So my boyfriend looks at me and he's like, honey, you need to like, you just need to push, you need to push, you need to push and like, you can do this. And so I was just like, oh my gosh. And so finally they were like, her head pops out and they were like, do you want to feel her hair? And I was like, no, I need to, I need to push again. Like I need her out. And so finally, you know, like the one last push, I did it. And, um, a nurse was able to record, you know, her coming out and like the cord and everything. So, um, I was able to look back on it but it was it was crazy so she had so she had her umbilical cord wrapped around her once and then she had the umbilical cord wrapped around her shoulders and like her upper body so when she came out she didn't cry too much and um you know automatically they took everything off they had daddy cut her umbilical cord and right away they placed her onto my chest and it was the best feeling in the world to just you know look down and have you know your child like there like it had been months you know and it was just it was crazy and um you know baby isla was a little blue um they finally like suctioned her like nose and like cleaned out her mouth and she started crying a little bit and so, you know, they kept her on your chest. They kept her on my chest for a good minute. You know, they're cleaning her and I'm over here like sobbing and crying like a, like a baby because, you know, like she's finally here. And so my boyfriend's like, you know, kissing me and telling me I did a great job. And, and so, you know, they take her away to go clean her and everything. And so with the struggle of having her, you know, out coming out, it was so hard because she had the umbilical cord wrapped around her. So I was pushing like, you know, I was pushing, I had to force her out just because of everything, you know, like that was going on with her. So because of that, I was severely, severely torn. And so they, they probably worked on me for a good 30 minutes. The one thing that I was scared of is bleeding out. And I, unfortunately, you know, because of that, like I, I was bleeding out a lot. And so they had to stitch me up right away and I had to actually like stay in the labor and delivery for
for more than an hour usually they they gave an hour for you to stay but i had to stay for more than an hour um just because they had to watch me and make sure like you know i wasn't bleeding anymore and so as they're working on me you know like giving me stitches and like i'm like so tired like after giving birth like my body was like shaking uncontrollably it was it's it's crazy how your body just like it had so much adrenaline and so much like you know power that it had like giving birth to this baby it just like goes into like this you know like I don't know like it was so like at first I was like so scared because I was like oh my god I can't stop shaking but then you know everybody told me like it was fine it was normal so I'm over here shaking and they're giving me stitches and my daughter is actually you know over there getting cleaned across from me and my boyfriend you know comes to me and he's like concerned for me and I said you know I'll go with the baby like that was my concern and so he goes with the baby and, and so they noticed that she started flaring another red flag for my boyfriend because he already knew what that meant so flaring is kind of like her nose or her nostrils were kind of like flaring just means like she's she was having trouble breathing and she wasn't like you know using her lungs to full capacity so that also scared my boyfriend and so but it wasn't like at too bad to the point where they were like oh she needs to be in an incubator and like we need to watch her and everything um, they just saw a very slight flaring and they thought they, they were like, you know, she's, she'll come out of it by herself. And so baby Isla got to stay in the room with me the entire time. So I was really, really happy about that. And, um, so yeah, so then, you know, everything happened. Um, they stitched me up really good and I stayed in there for a few hours. The bleeding stopped and then I had to stay in the hospital for four days and three nights because of my preeclampsia. They had to make sure that my blood pressure was, you know, back down and they had to make sure that my swelling was pretty much gone. Oh, I hear her. She's waking up from her nap. I'll bring her over, guys, so you guys can meet her. But um, she's, she's not crying yet, so I'll wait until, like, she's really, really crying. But, um... So, so yeah, anyway, so like, you know, I had to stay in there for th four days, three nights, and my boyfriend was like literally going back and forth from the hospital to his clinical rotation. The nurses and like the care provider there, they were amazing beyond belief. Like they, you know, obviously like you're, when you're a new mom and giving birth, like you're so tired and you want to sleep. And so I probably slept like you know four hours throughout that whole entire day because like you know i just want to make sure like the baby was fine but um the, you know they came to offer her like offered to like help feed her and they would change her for me which was really really amazing we couldn't have any visitors obviously due to covid the day that we were supposed to be checking out unfortunately the nurse like saw her and they caught like she was kind of jaundiced and so you know they did like a little test and she ended up coming back you know a little jaundiced and I think it was just because they said, you know, because I was breastfeeding her, my milk hadn't fully came in. So the baby was not receiving, you know, a lot of food. So they were telling me that I had to supplement for the meantime. So, you know, give her formula because, she, you know, if I fed her a lot more, the jaundice would kind of go away. And then, you know, if I went back home, like I could leave her in front of a window and um, I just have the sun hit her for a little, like for an hour or something just to help her. So they were waiting to kind of discharge us but they were waiting because they didn't know if they wanted to keep her there for the night just because they didn't want it to get worse so oh she's uh let me go get her i'll be right back okay guys we're back little baby's here this is little isla say hi mamas i'm gonna say hi she's too distracted with our dogs right now but Anyways, so, yeah, like I said, during checkout, they told me that she was little jaundiced, they were going to keep her, but they ended up letting us go because her numbers were really, really low, and they seemed perfectly fine. The doctor felt comfortable with, like, letting us go home. So, uh, you know, we arrived home, and it was amazing to bring a healthy little girl back home. And so... Uh, when we brought her home, obviously, like, we recorded, like, the dogs meeting her for the first time because they have never seen a baby, like, and then they had never been, like, they don't live with babies, so that was, like, really different for them, but they love her so, so much. Like, every time she cries, they have to be next to her, like, all the time. It's crazy. But that is my labor and delivery story. Um, 
oh my god i forgot to tell you guys when you go in to like they only test the women for covid so when you go in um when they were doing my assessment they actually tested me for covid and i, I came back negative thank god and yeah so that's like another little thing that happened during during a hospital visit but everything else was smooth sailings i that was our labor and delivery story i have nothing but good things to say about the hospital that we delivered at i loved everything about it i loved my experience um i just want to end this video by you know also letting anyone who is watching this video and if you're pregnant or if you're you know about to give birth i just want to let you guys know that you guys can do it i know this pandemic is um very hard on us i know it had has been very difficult you know there you just want every you know you want your family around you you want your mom you want your dad you want your siblings you want like your tias and your tios you want everyone you know to be there with you and i know like during this time it's really sad because they can't be there to go visit you and like comfort you and to welcome the new baby but you ladies can get through this like do not let this, you know, put you in a bad mood or like, you know, don't let this kind of like depress you because it, by the end of the day, you bring in a beautiful, beautiful life that you get to enjoy with you and your, you know, your other half. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Be so big. But, you know, don't be discouraged. Don't be sad. They'll get through it. Right, mama? They'll get through it. Yeah, they're gonna get through it, huh? You guys will get through it, and... Hi! We will come back with another video, Ooh. and hopefully we'll show Daddy, right? Yeah, and we'll give you guys more updates on what's going on with us, because there is so much going on. There's gonna be a move involved. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of things going on, huh? A lot of things. So we'll keep you guys updated and we love you guys so much. And if you guys are new here, don't forget to, what is it? Comment, like, and subscribe and hit that, that bell button below so you know when we're posting our next video. Say bye, mamas. Bye. <laughs> Mwah, besitos. Mwah, besitos. Mwah, besitos.